this video we will discuss about ES6 classes which are in uh, JavaScript class syntax and we will discuss that how we can declare a class, how we can use the class expression how we can create and access the accessor and mutators in other words we sometimes call them getter and setters and we will see that how public and private properties can be used with ES6 classes and which browsers and which platforms support which features of JavaScript ES6 classes so let's dive into it JavaScript classes were introduced in ECM script 2015. We also call it ES6 uh, standard of uh, JavaScript. And we know that React JS and React Native uses ES6. Basically, ES6 classes are just the syntactical sugar over JavaScript existing prototype based inheritance. We already know that JavaScript is not an object oriented programming language, but it's a prototype based language. But we can somehow achieve the inheritance and all class based or classes features in JavaScript with the help of prototype based and functions. So class syntax is actually helpful for the developers to better understand and transform or shift from one programming language to the other programming language. But it does not mean that if the class syntax is used in the JavaScript, in ES6 JavaScript, JavaScript becomes the object-oriented programming language. No, it's not. It's still the prototype-based language and it's still just like the function-based language. So classes are actually, in fact, special functions and they just define we can define them with the help of function expression and function declaration so class syntax has two components which is we can define a class with the class declaration itself we can use the class expression just like function uh, expression and we see that how we can declare the classes in uh, es6 classes in javascript one way to define a class is using a class declaration to declare a class you use the class keyword just like in other modern programming languages so it's just the syntax that is the different and this syntax would help us to easily transfer from one programming language, which is somehow the modern programming language such as Java, C Sharp. We can actually shift from that language to JavaScript ES6 classes, and the class syntax is similar. So we can use the class keyword with the help of class keyword. We create the class, define the class name, just like other languages. To, to create a constructor, we normally use the class name in modern languages. But in JavaScript, we use the constructor keyword, which is a reserved word and is we, we, we often call it constructor function so constructor function takes several arguments it can be no argument and we initialize or instantiate the local fields or the class fields uh, with the help of constructor so this is the very basic uh, syntax of the es6 class declaration before discussing the es6 classes further we first need to see that how things are hosted or not Actually, hoisting is a JavaScript default behavior, which is actually moving the declarations on the top automatically. And in JavaScript, you can say that a variable can be declared after it has been used. In this example, if you see that this variable has been declared first, it has been assigned a value first, then declared, then used. In this case, normally we follow in other languages that we first declare the variable, then we assign a value, and then we use it. But in JavaScript, you can do this, that this variable has the assignment first, and then it has the declaration. And then this variable is used. Similarly, in this example, these variables has the initializations first, then they are declared, and then they are used. And this is a normal way that we first declare the variables, then we initialize. So why this example and this example of JavaScript works? Because JavaScript by default is hoisted, which means that it moves the declarations on the top. In other hand, if we talk about ES6, so we know that let and const, they were introduced in ES6. And they are actually not hoisted, which means that we have the reference error over here, unlike var. So in var, it moves the declarations on the top. So first the variable is declared, then initialized, and then used. Similarly, with the const, we have an error over here that this x is not known over here. So it's actually uh, declared or uh, initialize first and then declare. So we have an syntax error over here that this x does not exist. So that's why with the var it works because in JavaScript all the declarations are moved on the top. So we, why we are learning this, I will explain this later. Here is an, another example and we need to actually understand the hosting declaration and initialization. So JavaScript actually hoist the declarations, not the initializations, which means that if you have separate declaration and separate initialization, it will hoist, otherwise not. In this example, we are declaring and initializing at the same time, and this is a normal way of 
working with the variables and using them. In this case, we have the initialization and declaration. And in this case, y would be undefined. And we perform the undefined arithmetic operation with the number, we get not number. And we are declaring and initializing later, which means that this is not hoisted. It will not move this declaration and initialization on the top. In this example, if you see that this x is declared and initialized, and in this case, y is declared, but later assigned. In this case, again, we have not a number because y has not been assigned any value and it's undefined by default. And later it has the assignment. In this case, we don't have the error and we get the output and that's actually the correct example of hoisting. So this variable x is declared and initialized. This y has been initialized over here, but not declared and used over here. And later this y is declared. So by default, JavaScript will host it, so it will move that declaration on the top. So actually, it will declare this y, then will initialize value, and then we'll use it. So by default, JavaScript is hosted, but not ES6. Now the point that we are making over here is that function declarations are hosted, which means that we can declare the function later, or we can do that other way around. So in this case, function declaration is later, and then use is first so we are using it as a class over here this function declaration and we declared it later on for javascript it's fine but if we talk about es6 classes we have an error over here which means that when we declare the class we have to use it after the declaration so we have a reference error over here because it cannot understand that what is rectangle because it's not defined and it's not hoisted but in JavaScript, other than ES6, normal vanilla JavaScript standard, it's hosted and move all the de declarations on the top. And that's why we don't have an any error over here. But here we have the error. So it means that when we work with ES6 classes or even ES6 Latin cons, we have to be very careful and we might get the reference errors and the syntax errors because we might understand that it's automatically hosted, but it's not. So ES6 actually are not hosted, whereas the vanilla JavaScript ES6 other than ES6 is actually hosted. Let me explain the hosting example with the code. You see over here, this X is initialized and declared together and used over here. In this case, Y is initialized but declared later on. So in JavaScript, they actually move all the declarations on the top. So actually, it's something like this, but it's seamless. We don't see that. So the difference is, if I move this declaration and the initialization and the end over here. So if I run this example, I will have not a number because y is not defined at this point. So because JavaScript is hosted, it only moves the declarations, not the initializations. So if it is initialized separately, and declared later, these declarations are moved on the top. Similarly with the functions, if we work with the functions and we declare and call the functions later, let's say function. So if I call the function and the declaration is later on, this will move the declarations on the top and then this function will be called. So the point of explaining this hosting is that it's different with the let and the const. So let and the const, it's different. So let's move back to the example we were working earlier. So let's assume it's let. So by the principle of hoisting, it will actually, it should actually move this declaration to the top. But in ES6, it will not. See, we have, an, we have a problem over here that this, uh, this cannot access Y before initialization. So we need to move this by ourselves on the top and then later on we can do the declaration and the initialization on the on. So when we are working with the ES6 classes or the let const, we must know that it's not hosted by default. Similarly, it's with the const as well and the most importantly, the point that we are making over here is the class. So for the function base, it works fine. For example, this is the student class. So we have a problem over here that we are accessing the student class, which is not initialized. 
Uh, whereas if we talk about the function based classes, we have seen that in the case of function, it's not a problem. Because by default, it's hoisted and this declaration would go on the top, but it's not in the case of ES6 classes. So in ES6 classes, we first create the class and then we call or access the object. So first we need to create the class and then we create the object. Class expression is another way to define a class. A class expression can be named or unnamed just like functions. So we are actually declaring a variable over here and this is unnamed class or we call it anonymous. And we can use this rectangle that type of variable to create the class, access the fields and so on. Class expression can be named as well. And in this case, we are using this expression or the class name with the class expression. And with the help of this rectangle, we can use it. So in both ways, the syntax is correct and we can use the class expression. Let's discuss the const constructors. So as discussed earlier, this constructor method is a special method for creating and initializing an object created with the class. And there can only be one special method with the name constructor in a class. And why is that so? How about if we want to overload constructor, how we do that? We know that in uh, JavaScript functions, it can be zero argument or it can be several argument. We actually use rest parameters and we actually don't, or JavaScript does not support the overloading of functions. So that's why that's also applied on the constructor as well. So there can be only one constructor or the special method named constructor in our class. Otherwise, we'll have the syntax error if we create or declare a multiple constructor. The good thing in ES6 JavaScript classes, just like in Java, we use super keyword to call the constructor of a parent class or the super class. We can also use the super keyword to call the constructor of the super class. To create and use getter and setter methods, we call it accessor and mutator sometimes. Mutator sometimes. Here is a class rectangle having a constructor, which is a special function. To create a getter, we use a get keyword and we create a function. We are not using a function keyword. Rather, we are using get keyword. With the help of get keyword, we are defining the area over here and this is the getter. Although it's returning the calc area function, whatever this function returns. So to define the setter method or the just the method, it's not necessary to be a setter method or the mutator method. To declare the method, you see that we don't have any function keyword in this. So we just declare the function name, create a function name with parentheses. And if you want to send the parameters, we can send over here. And when we, when we create the object, we can use the getter method without the parentheses. So it's different. We are not using square dot area with the parentheses. We are using square dot area. But to call the function or access the function, we need to call it with the parameters or with the braces if there are no parameters. Here is another example of getters and methods and how we can create and use them. Again, in the rectangle class, we have the height getter method and uh, we use get keyword to create that. This is the getter method. In this, we are just returning the height with the help of this keyword, we are accessing this. We have the setter method, which is actually setting the height and taking one argument. And when we use this height getter method, we just use with, with just like a variable name or the field name. To set height or the use the setter method, we can actually call it just like a method and we pass the parameters. We have created a function, uh, a class over here, and uh, we are calling the getter method, which returns the height of this rectangle. We are using the setter method and we are passing the argument and it will set the value and when we access that it will be changed because when we pass it, it will set over here. So this is another example of getter method and the setter methods or just the methods. That's how we create and use methods in ES6 classes. We can also define the static method with ES6 classes. For this, we just need to use the static keyword and the method name. And we know that static methods are used or called with the class name directly. That's why we need to be very careful when we are declaring and uh, defining the static methods. And static methods are sometimes also called, they are just like the utility functions. So when we create the objects, of the classes, we cannot use the static methods or we cannot call the static methods through the objects. For this, we need to call it with the class name. So this is just like a utility function. For example, we use the math, which is uh, the built-in class available in JavaScript. 
I mean, we can call the different methods of math class directly, which means these are the utility functions and they don't need to have the instance properties or the instance variables. So let's discuss the uh, instance properties and uh, static properties. Here is an example of class which we are uh, already using. So these are the instance properties which uh, can be accessed through the object of rectangle. How about if we want to create the static properties? We want to create the static properties with the help of class name and then dot class or the uh, property name. And we assign any value. And after that, the static field, we can access that static field directly with the help of class name. To define the instance property later after the class declaration, we can use the prototype keyword and uh, we can use the property name or the variable name that we can define with this or we can associate with this class. But to use that, we actually need to create the object and with the help of object, we can access that. It's not available directly with the class name. So we can define the static properties or static fields with the class name just like this. We can also declare public and private fields in ES6 JavaScript classes. To declare a public field after the class declaration or the class body whenever it starts, we declare a field name without defining the let const or var declaration type. We just declare the variable name and we assign some value if we want. And we can use that directly with the help of class name. So in other words, by default, we know that fields are public. So for the, in the case of public, it's not a big deal. Either we define in this way or we just use the class name directly. So we can uh, use the object name and with the help of object name, we can access the field directly. So important thing is that because we know that with the prototype based classes and with the ES6 classes, the problem with the private fields. So to define the private fields in JavaScript, we use the high sign before the variable name declaration. And whenever we access that private field, we use with the help of hash sign. You see that we are calling the private field, we're accessing the private field over here, also here and here. And if we want to access this uh, height, which is a private field, we get an error that direct dot height is undefined. We cannot directly access. And then we can create the getter or set of methods to access the data of these private fields. So that's how we can declare the private fields in JavaScript. Inheritance in ES6 classes is very similar to Java. We can use the extent keyword to tell that this is the dry class of animal, let's say in this case. And we can use the super keyword to call the base class constructor or the super class constructor. And we can pass the variables directly to the super class constructor and rest of the things are just like normal classes. In this case, we are creating the object and sending the name over here. And that name is directly sent to the parent class and set over here. And if we call the function, this speak function, and we say that with the box like this. So which means that the speak function is called and with the help of this dot name, we can access the fields or the instance variables of the parent class. So that's the important portion of this inheritance that we use the extends keyword. And with the in, inside the constructor, the first statement should be super so that we call the um, constructor of the super class. When we are working with ES6 classes, we have to be careful and see the versions of each platform which support the features of ES6 classes. So if we look at this table and the source is MDN, so you can go to this source and get the latest version of uh, this updated table. And you can also contribute and you can, if you find something, uh, some of the features of ES6 classes which are not available or which are somehow is available now, you can actually tell at the MBN website and you can contribute and that can help the developers. So if you look at the ES6 features, so classes is somehow available with almost all the features, although Internet Explorer is an ex exception that nothing is available in this and I guess nobody use Internet Explorer nowadays. And if you are inter interested in using the Microsoft uh, browsers, so people actually use the Edge. And with the each browser, you also see the mobile version and the desktop version. And for the server side, we have the Node.js and the versions are specified over here. So if we see that static fields or static static class field has some issues with the compatibility and we should better avoid using this and or we 
should know the development environment where we are going to deploy uh, the JavaScript script. If we look at the classes, so they were way beyond and before they were available. Uh, Chrome version 49, it was available. Currently, at the time of recording, uh, the latest version of Chrome right now is 85. So you see that private fields uh, were introduced or supported in Chrome 74 version and the Edge 79 version and Firefox, they are still not available. And also for the Firefox Android and the Samsung internet. So this is a table that would be helpful for us to know the browser compatibility when we are working with JavaScript and we see these tables. And if we click this small arrow, we get the detail that when this uh, specific feature was available to that specific browser to or the specific version of the browser. Previously, we worked on the prototype base of function based classes in JavaScript in which we created a parent class or the base class and the dry class of student and employee and the teacher. So let's do this in uh, ES6 uh, classes. So I can reuse these classes. So I will convert this into an ES6 class syntax. So in this case, we will not have the uh, function Rather, we have the class name only, and then we need to have the constructor. This is our person class. We are passing two parameters, and that would be used for the class instance variables. And then similarly, if we convert this, we will create a constructor function. It's not available in IntelliSense because we did not change this function to the class and now it should be available. Similarly for the employee class, so these are the classes but we have not defined the inheritance. So if we see that in inheritance over here, we have the student class which has the parent class person. So we have the student is a drive class of person and employee is a drive class a person as well. So student is a the drive class of person. Also the employee it's the drive class of person. Similarly teacher is the drive class of employee. Another thing is that we were calling the base class constructor. In the case of student we are not doing this over here but we should do that. We should send the first name and last name of the student to the parent class. And uh, we should receive uh, the first name and last name over here. And in employee, we are actually sending the first name and the last name with the help of call and the department is the field of the employee class. So in the employee class, if we want to uh, send these parameters to the parent class, we use super. So with the help of super, we are sending these parameters to the parent class which is which is the person class and similarly for the teacher we have sending first name last name and the department to the employee class and then employee class is sending to the person class or the calling the constructor of the person class and these parameters would set over there similarly we can convert this into super instead of base and this syntax is by default or primarily is es6 syntax which is the default setting or the default value if user does not pass while creating the object Similarly, if we talk about the getter functions, we can do that. So with the help of get, so we can create the setter and the getter functions as well. And let's also call the base class constructor with the first name and the last name. So let's uh, create some objects. So we will follow the same code or use the same code. So we are creating a teacher object having the uh, first name, last name, department, and the courses. In this case, we are not passing any courses. So we are expecting to set the default these two courses. And uh, then if we use the object and ex uh, access the first name, which is the first, which is the instance variable of the uh, base class or the base class of the teacher is employee and employee is having the base class person. 
or we can call or say that the supermost class and the department A is also the employee and then the courses is part of uh, this uh, class so first I will comment that out and let's see what would be output on the console so we have the first name we have the last name we have the department first name last name and the department and we have default courses so let's set some courses with the help of courses property so we can set the courses like this and we can access with the help of courses property we can also create the getter method over here so let's say get so in this case although it's not much different with the uppercase c i can make it get courses so so that we can differentiate so get courses is the getter function and we know that with the getter function we don't use parentheses we just use it just like a variable so you see we get the same output and similarly if we want to change the set function uh, change the courses we use set courses function and we send the courses array over here and this will set the courses So instead of this now we will use the teacher object dot set courses and we will set the courses over here so i just think i should copy that and now i'm setting courses with the help of setter method and uh, this is the setter method defined in the teacher class and we'll send the courses and we'll set the instance variable and we'll use the getter to get the courses so we are setting three courses with the help of set courses and getting the courses or the array of courses with the help of get courses and it's also uh, giving the entire sense that it's returning the string array also to define the static field let's uh, discuss that let's create a static field over here and we can with the help of first we talk about the static method so static method is just like a normal method with the static keyword so with, with the help of employee class we can call the department method directly and this will output the static value or the static department which is written from here so with the help of static field we can use that directly or call that function static function directly with the help of employee and that's how actually we do in ES6 classes similarly we can also define the static fields so for the static fields we can use the class name and with the help of class name we can define the static field so default value of this static field is lecture and we can call it with the help of class name directly without creating the object 